This video was requested by one of our viewers, Jack Davis. If you want to submit video topics, then fill out the form linked below. And if you don't have any ideas immediately, then no worries. It'll be in the description of every video going forward. A couple of weeks ago, we made a video on our UK channel analysing why the Conservatives have a good chance of winning the next election, or elections. And, well, now it's America's turn. And once again, this video probably won't feel great if you're a Liberal. Because, well, Democrats, the news ain't great. Today we're going to be taking a look at why the upcoming midterms in 2022, in which everything but the presidency is on the table, are looking pretty red. There's a lot of reasons why 2022 doesn't look good for the Democrats. There's historical trend lines, there's redistricting, there's the filibuster, and we'll get on to all of that. But the one thing that you should take away from this video, other than the fact that you should subscribe to this channel, is that as American democracy currently lies, Republicans naturally win federal power more than the Democrats, popular support or otherwise. This is not a value statement. Whether you think the field should be flattened or played on its natural slope is irrelevant. The fact is, the field is sloped, and the ball, whether the Democrats like it or not, is already rolling. The most famous example of institutional bias in American politics is the Electoral College. Which makes sense, given that two out of the last three elections won by Republicans saw the Democrats actually win the popular vote. And that, to understate things, is bound to catch some headlines and spark some passionate feelings. But as has been pointed out before, the Electoral College is far from the most consistently biased institution. After all, it skewed Democratic from 2004 to 2012 and has fluctuated in its party bias throughout its existence. However, the other two elected bodies in the federal government, the House and the Senate, well, they're not quite so whimsical. Most people are somewhat aware of the Senate's GOP lean, and it's not like it was set up to be small d democratic in the first place. I mean, originally senators weren't even elected by the people, they were appointed by state governments. But still, it's worth taking a moment to look at this weird body, because things have changed in recent years that make it even more Republican. Most of this originates from the modern rural-urban partisan split that began in the mid-20th century. As the Senate was designed to give more voice to the less popular states, being the party that's popular in the rural farmlands and fields that dominate states from Montana to Mississippi was always going to work out well in the Senate. But even in the latter part of the 20th century, this divide was blurry. In fact, it was blurry through the current century too. Here's a map of the Senate during the 111th Congress. This map is wild for a lot of reasons. North Dakota and West Virginia, for example, both had Democratic senators. And those are two of the most conservative states in the nation. And while Joe Manchin is still holding on today, he's the exception. And that's putting it mildly. Nearly every rural or conservative state Democrats held in 2009 has traded their Democrat for a Republican. South Dakota, Indiana, Alaska, Louisiana, the list goes on. And while we're going down this rabbit hole, let's focus on this Senate map a bit further, because there are a few things that make this one a bit of an outlier. The excitement around Barack Obama, the anger at Republicans after Iraq, and the economic collapse brought about a massive blue wave in 2008. But still, it's hard to imagine any Democrat, much less two of them, winning North Dakota today, no matter what was going on nationally. And that's because politics has become more national. The Joe Manchins of the 111th Congress won their seats because people felt like they knew them personally. And that personal trust people had in their senators overpowered their federal loyalties. Ticket splitting was just a lot more natural. And this hasn't entirely gone away. Susan Collins' victory in Maine last year, despite that state's normally blue hue, could broadly be boiled down to the fact that Susan Collins just feels like a Mainer. People in Maine vote for her because they feel like they know her and they can relate to her. She's a moderate from a rural part of the state, and that energy will be hard to mistake for anything but local. But in an atmosphere where national politics trumps everything else, pun slightly intended, Democrats just can't win the broad down-ballot support they used to be able to do. And so, in a body that favours rural voters, Republicans dominate. In 2009, 13 Democratic senators represented states that Obama had lost in the previous year. 
The number of Democrats representing states that Biden lost last year? Well, that's just three. And while the same holds true for the Republicans, that still leaves the GOP with a natural advantage in a world in which Democrats tend to concentrate in a few big cities in a handful of states. And the story is a similar one in the House. But before we get into that, we need to get a bit more local. Because while this video is about federal politics, state politics play a significant role in 2022 as well, and it's in state legislatures that Republicans really dominate. Republicans currently hold 30 state legislatures, while Democrats only hold 18, and the remaining two, Minnesota and Alaska, is split. The point is that 30 is a lot, in fact, quite a bit more than 18. The GOP also holds a majority of the governorships at 27, with the Democrats holding the remaining 23. Altogether, that means 38 trifectas, in which one party controls both houses of the legislature and the governor's mansion. 23 for the GOP and just 15 for the Democrats. Now, I've just said a lot of numbers, but there is, I promise, a point to all of this. And the point is that Republicans control a majority of state-level power. A lot of that is just because they're good at winning elections over the past few years, but part of it is down to the tilted field. And let's take Wisconsin as an example. Statewide, it's pretty purple. It went for Trump in 2016 and Biden in 2020, and it's one of only a handful of states with split representation in the Senate. However, it's a state legislature that's long been dominated by the Republicans. And part of this is because of the natural state of play in the state, where so much of the Democratic vote comes from just two cities, Milwaukee and Madison. But gerrymandering also plays a not insignificant role here too. A researcher at Marquette University estimated that in order to win a bare majority in the state legislature, Democrats had to win 8.2% more ballots than Republicans statewide. This is a trend that follows, although not always quite as extremely, across basically all states. Since state-level districts often get less scrutiny than districts from the US Congress, it's easy for state legislators to shape some crooked districts for their own benefits. Republicans already gain from this by virtue of the aforementioned population dynamics, concentrated city Dems versus spread out rural Republicans. But the GOP is also helped by the sheer timing of its recent elections too. Redistricting is done once every 10 years, and in the midterms right before the last redistricting in 2010, the Republicans absolutely murdered the Democrats. And while 2020 wasn't exactly Tea Party red, it was a lot less blue than many Democrats expected or wanted. All of which brings us back to the House. Those same state legislatures that have so gerrymandered themselves also get the joy of redrawing the districts for the US House. And, well, you can see how this picture isn't looking great for Democrats. Put simply, Democrats need to do better than just a majority or a plurality to win nationally. To win 2022 and beyond, they would either have to win big, big enough to overcome the natural and mandate GOP advantages, or they'd have to win enough votes in just the right way to win just the right districts, which is difficult when your opponents are often the ones drawing the districts. All of this has gotten pretty wonky, so to end, let's just zoom out a bit. The broader picture is one that tilts Republicans. Not so much that Democrats have no chance of winning, but enough of a tilt to make it an uphill battle for them. Every level of legislative power at stake in 2022, from state legislatures to the US House and Senate, would, if each party won exactly 50% of the vote, go to the Republicans. The GOP would then naturally control Congress, likely ending any hope President Biden has of more sweeping legislation, as well as them winning a majority of states. On top of these institutional tilts, there's also other smaller things too. The President's party generally does quite poorly in midterms. 2010 and 1994 were catastrophic years for Biden's most recent Democratic predecessors, in both cases turning significant Democratic majorities in one or both chambers into minorities. This is often chalked up to the fact that voters want a president to deliver, and delivering, especially in the first two years, is hard. 
voters elected Barack Obama and Bill Clinton dreaming of sweeping change and a new politics, and were quite unhappy when those thrilling new transformational presidents were quickly mired into the normal institutional drudgery of governing. Obviously, things like the filibuster that let the Republicans stop the Democrats from legislating and then attack Democrats later for not being able to legislate aren't ideal for Biden's already slim majorities and won't impress most voters. But then again, Joe Biden isn't Barack Obama, nor is he Bill Clinton. His majorities may be slimmer than either of theirs, and he may not have a great number of forces tilting in his favour, but that doesn't mean that he's totally screwed. Um, we're not in the prediction business. So who knows? Maybe 22 will surprise you. Do you have any other 2022 questions? If you do, then be sure to suggest topics and ask questions using the form linked below. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when those videos come out. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.